And he was Muhammad sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam. What kind of a state did he establish? It was exactly the same in foundations as holy Israel. There was no difference in foundations. Number one, sovereignty was recognized to belong to Allah. Number two, supreme authority was recognized to belong to Allah. Number three, the supreme law that was enforced was Allah's law. So exactly as holy Israel. But there was a difference. The model of a state delivered by Nabi Dawood alayhi salam and Nabi Suleiman alayhi salam was advanced to a higher stage. And listen carefully now as we describe the difference between the two. In Holy Israel, there were only two kinds of citizens. Those who had faith in Allah and they were citizens of the state. And if you did not have faith in Allah, if you were pagan, you were not a citizen of the state. But now, when Nabi Muhammad والسلام, arrived in Medina, the Muslims are a small group. You have a community of Jews in Medina who far outnumber the Muslims. In addition to which you have a large number of pagan Arab tribes, many of whom are in competition and rivalry with each other. So you do not have a homogeneous polity, a population which is politically organized is called a polity, P-O-L-I-T-Y. Instead of a homogeneous polity, you have a plural society. The plurality was in the diverse religious beliefs and the multiplicity of tribal loyalties. Mm -hmm. How do you establish a state that would recognize and respect plurality in the society? Dajjal has presented what he calls a secular state. And Dajjal argues that the secular state it is which can embrace plurality and allow people of different religions and belonging to different tribes to coexist harmoniously. No Dajjal. No. We did it. And we did it 1400 years ago in Medina. What Nabi Muhammad والسلام, did was to recognize the plurality of the society and to respect that plurality. Secondly, to recognize each group as a unit of a state to be established. And so the Jews would be a unit and to the extent that there were rival Jewish tribes in rivalry with each other, each of those would be a separate unit. So the individual is not the unit of the state. This is not one man, one vote. No, that can't work. One man, one vote cannot work in a plural society. Rather, each group in a plural society 
must be recognized as a unit of the state. But they did it in Lebanon. And so now he embarks upon a laborious task of meeting with all the different tribes and all the different religious groups. He did not make the mistake of convening a constitutional conference and bring everybody under one roof to negotiate it because you would have ended in chaos. He chose a wiser path. Nabi Muhammad went to each group and patiently sat with them and listened to them and heard what they had to offer. What are our basic demands from the state? And having met with all of them, he carefully and skillfully constructed a constitutional agreement which came to be known as the Mithak of Marin, the first written constitution in the world, really. And this constitutional agreement delivered the basic duties and protected the basic rights of all the constituent parts of the state. And so, while that Islamic state in Jerusalem may be considered to have been a unitary state where all the citizens are a homogeneous whole. This one in Medina may be described as a plural model of a state in which those who have faith in Allah are only one part of the state. And the Sharia or the law from Allah which is enforced on the believers is not enforced on those who are not Muslims. You don't take the law of Islam and enforce it on the Jews? No. Nor do you take the law of Islam and enforce it on the pagan Arabs? No. But the law of Islam is enforced on the Muslims. So one more time. The state in Medina is also a Khilafah state as the state of David and Solomon alayhi salam. The state in Medina recognizes Allah's sovereignty to the extent that you believe in Allah. It recognizes Allah's supreme authority to the extent that you believe in Allah. And it recognizes Allah's law as the supreme law to the extent that they belong to the community of those who believe in Allah. So you may want to call this a democratic state, huh? Because it recognizes the rights of all. There's freedom of belief. There's freedom of worship. If you want to worship the idol, that's your freedom. This Khilafah state needs to be described in a little bit more detail now. It did away with petty nationalisms. You may belong to a tribe called the Aus or another tribe called the Khazraj. You may be Muhajirun from Mecca, you may be Ansar from Medina. But you are now members of a universal community that supersedes petty nationalism. You're Muslim. And once you are a Muslim, you are the brother of every other Muslim. It doesn't matter whether he was born in Medina or whether he came from outside of Medina. You all have equal status as citizens of this state to the extent that you belong to this community. And so emerged an Islamic state. 
which is part of a larger state, the state of Medina. Let me repeat, you, you have the emergence of an Islamic state with citizens who are only Muslims. The Jews in Medina are not a part of a Muslim state. Have you got peanuts in your head? Huh? The pagan Arabs in Medina are not part of an Islamic state. Have you got peanuts in your head? But they are a part of the state of Medina. Because this is a plural model of a state. To the extent that you belong to the Islamic component of the state, the community of Muslims, this state does not distinguish between people of different nationalities. If you were in China and you took the Shahada and you became a Muslim, you don't need <laughs> you don't need a visa to come to Medina. No. From the time you take the Shahada and you reach to Medina, you are admitted into the state as an equal member of all the other Muslims in the state. Hmm? Number two. When you come to Medina, you're Chinese. When you come to Medina and you're allowed to enter into the state, you don't need a residence permit to reside in the state. No. You have the freedom to reside. Number three, if you want to get a job in Medina, to earn your livelihood, you don't need a work permit. No. The state recognizes you to have equal status and equal rights with all other Muslims. Number, th number four. If we have to appoint a head of state and we choose an apparatus, a methodology for appointing, today they use elections then you are allowed to vote like everybody else and your vote will have equal status with all the others hmm? if you use this method and so a model of a state emerged a khilafah state which recognized the right of every other Muslim irrespective of where he was born irrespective of what kind of nationality he had, irrespective of which tribe he belonged to. Number one, the right to enter. You don't need a visa. Number two, the right to reside. You don't need a residence permit. Number three, the right to seek your livelihood. You don't need a work permit. Number four, the right to participate in the political process on the basis of political equality with all other Muslims. You don't need citizenship this model of a state this model of